Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit. Reading today is our brother David. And the precept that we are going to deal with today is the true church and the Gentiles. The true church and the Gentiles. Last week, we dealt with the true church, what the true church was. We know that in um, Genesis, Joseph had a dream, and he told his father the dream, that the 11 stars, the sun, and the moon were bowing down to him. And that the, uh, uh, his father said, well, what, should your brethren and your mother and I bow down to you and make obeisance to you? So the father interpreted, 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 boy, don't say that three times fast, the dream as being him, his wife, and his children, or what later became known as the nation of Israel. And when you go into Revelation, the 12th chapter, there is a true church of God that the Lord is protecting in the wilderness. And it's 12 stars and the sun and the moon. It's the nation of Israel is the true church of God. We broke that down last week. What we're going to deal with this week, sisters and brothers, is the true church and the Gentiles. Because under the New Covenant, all over the New Testament, you see Israel is dealing with Gentiles in particular. They're dealing with heathens and the rest of the nations and the strangers of all nations. But they're dealing specifically with Gentiles. Because it's now the time of the Gentiles, like it is today. It's almost the end of the time of the Gentiles, where Jesus is going to set up his kingdom. But the Gentiles are in power. And they were in power in Jesus' time during Jesus' ministry, and they are in power today. So when the New Testament is referring to the Gentiles, it's referring to a specific son of Noah. And we're going to, just for the sake of the lesson today, we're going to make clear who those three sons of Noah are today, but we're going to pay particular attention to the true church and the Gentiles, because this is the time of the Gentiles. And we're going to see that's why Paul went to Gentile rulers and kings. We're going to start this off in Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus 19. And Brother David, whenever you're ready to start off our precept, brother, we'll pick it up in verse 5. Exodus 19 and verse 5. The true church and the Gentiles. Go ahead, brother. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So anyone that takes a hold of God's covenant and they keep his commandments become a peculiar people because the rest of the world doesn't understand the ways of God. You've got to seek God in order for him to open up the path of salvation to you. Go ahead, brother. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So now when our Messiah, Christ Jesus, we know this is Jesus, so when I refer to God in the Bible, we're referring to the only God man ever dealt with. Jesus before he came into flesh, for the sake of the argument, we're just going to say Jesus every time we're dealing with the God that dealt with man. So Jesus told Israel, if you keep my commandments and all my statutes and judgments, you're going to be a peculiar people and you're going to be a kingdom of priests in a holy nation. Now, the other nations can't be a kingdom of priests, but we can be a peculiar people. We can be teachers and we have gifts under the new covenant, but we can't be a kingdom of priests. That was reserved for God's nation of Israel. But we can become a peculiar people and we must become a peculiar people if we're going to make the kingdom of God. But now this message of salvation was given to Israel and to Israel first. Let's go to Romans, the third chapter. And there's a reason for that. God has a protocol, sisters and brothers, from the Father to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, to the nation of Israel to teach all nations. And we're going to make that clear as we continue. We have to make that clear so you can understand how the Gentiles are inclusive in the new covenant. Romans 3, Romans 3, brother, let's pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. Go ahead. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? So what does it matter about Israel? Go ahead, brother. Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Much every way, because chiefly unto Israel were committed the oracles of God. 
the revelations on how to come back to our Heavenly Father and be reconciled. Let's go and look at a couple of definitions now. Because we've got God talking to Israel, telling them to keep my commandments and you'll be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And then we're Paul himself, when he's dealing with the Romans, he says, well, what advantage of there is, is there of being an Israelite? He said, much every way, because unto Israel were committed the oracles of God. Let's go and we're going to look first at Easton's Bible Dictionary. And we're going to look at the definition of the term Jew. Easton's Bible Dictionary. Go ahead, brother. The name derived from the patriarch Judah. At first, given to one belonging to the tribe of Judah, or to the separate kingdom of Judah. Uh-huh. In contradistinction from those belonging to the kingdom of the ten tribes who were called Israel. So it was similar, but it was different. That's contradistinction. It was similar, but different. So those of the tribe of Judah were called Jews, and it was similar to those that belonged to the other ten tribes were called Israelites. Because you know those other ten tribes were separated in Solomon's wickedness. So you had the tribe of Judah, and then you had the ten tribes of Israel. Go ahead, brother. During the captivity and after the restoration, the name, however, was extended to all Hebrew nations without distinction. So then later on, it just became a, 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 not a term of endearment, but it became a slang for anybody of the nation of Israel. Go ahead, brother. Originally, this people were called Hebrews. Uh -huh. But Paul, oh, but after the exile, this name fell into disuse. Right. But Paul was styled a Hebrew. But Paul kept saying, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew Israelite. But the, the term Hebrew went out the window, and now it just became the term Israelite or Jew. Go ahead. The history of the Jewish nation is interwoven with the history of Palestine and with the narratives of the lives of their rulers and chief men. Uh -huh. They are now dispersed all over the lands and to this day remain a separate people uh -huh. without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without a ephod, without a teraphim, uh -huh. till about the beginning of the present century they were everywhere greatly oppressed. Uh -huh and often cruelly persecuted. And the two Israelites still are, and they still are separated. But this is a worldly definition we're looking at. They don't know who Israel truly is, but it's not hard to prove. And some of them probably do. Go ahead, brother. But now their condition is greatly improved, and they are admitted in most European countries to all the rights of free citizens. In 1860, the Jewish disabilities were removed, and they were admitted to a seat in the British Parliament. Their number... In all, is estimated about six millions, about four millions being in Europe. Now, this isn't talking about the Israel of the Bible, sisters and brothers. This is talking about what the world calls the Jewish people, or those that mankind set back up in Jerusalem in 1948. That wasn't God that sent them up in Jerusalem, and we know those aren't the original Israelites, because Jesus says he's got them scattered until he gathers them at his return. Go ahead, brother. There are three names used in the New Testament to, in, in the New Testament to designate this people. Uh-huh. Jews as regards to their nationality to distinguish them from Gentiles. So down in the New Testament, you've got Jews and Gentiles. To the Jew first and also the Gentile. Go ahead, brother. Hebrews with regard to their language and education to distinguish them from Hellenists, Jews who spoke the Greek language. And Israelites, as respects their sacred privileges as the chosen people of God. To other races, we owe the splendid inheritance of modern civilization and secular culture. But the religious education of mankind has been the gift of the Jew alone. The religious education of mankind has been the gift of the Israelite alone. Look what this says. Three names used in the New Testament to designate this people. Jews as regard to their nationality to distinguish them from the Gentiles. In other words, if you're a fiscal Israelite under a New Testament, they're calling you a Jew. It's no longer just for those from the tribe of Judah. It became a slang for the entire nation. Hebrews, with regard to their language and education, to distinguish them from Hellenists, those were Israelites that spoke Hebrew. And then you had the Grecians, were Israelites that spoke Greek. Those weren't Greeks. Those were Israelites that spoke Greek. And then you have Israelites in general as respects to their sacred privilege as the chosen people of God. What did Paul just say in Romans, the third chapter? What good is there to be an Israelite? Chiefly every way, because unto them were committed the oracles of God. Mankind Bible dictionaries back that up. Because it says that their religious education of mankind has been a gift of the Israelites alone. Let's go now and look at what Shem 
the definition of Shem, and this is Eastern Bible, uh, excuse me, the Eastern Bible Dictionary also. This is Shem. Go ahead, brother. A name, renowned, the first mentioned of the sons of Noah. He was probably the eldest of Noah's sons. In the words, brother of Japheth, the elder, in the version, Shem's name was generally mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. The words, brother of Japheth, the elder, in Genesis 10, 21, are more correctly rendered the elder brother of Japheth. Uh -huh. As in the revised version, Shem's name is generally mentioned in the first in the list of Noah's sons. Uh -huh. He and his wife were saved in the ark, Genesis 7 and 13. Noah foretold his preeminence over Canaan. And he died at the age of 600 years, having been for many years contemporary with Abraham. Uh -huh. According to the usual chronology, Go ahead, brother. the Israelitish nation sprang from him. So the Israelitish nation sprang from Shem. We're not concerned with Ishmael and all this. We're looking at the, the three sons briefly. Now, let's go take a look at the definition of Ham. So we've got out of Shem, you got the Israelites came out. Okay? Let's go into Ham. And again, this isn't a history lesson on who's who and everything, but we have to make it plain with the scriptures so that we can understand the, the, the precept in this lesson. Go ahead, brother. The sons of Ham. And this is Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. The youngest son of Noah, prob born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. He's the progenitor of the dark races, or all the black nations came out of Ham. Go ahead, brother. Not Negroes. But, but not the Negro, because that's Israel. And we've got lessons that we can prove that. We're just going to put it on the table today and keep moving for the sake of understanding this lesson. The nation of Israel is what we know today in America as the black coloreds or Negroes, those that were enslaved and brought here in ships. Go ahead, brother. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. So that's who he's the progenitor of those African nations, the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, the Canaanites. Go ahead, brother. His indecency, when his father lay drunken, brought a curse upon Canaan. Uh-huh. To a city east of Jordan, uh, the descendants of the original Ham, in these passages, Ham is used as another name for Egypt, as representing Ham's principal descendant. So the, Egypt, e the ancient Egyptians were Hamites. They were a dark race people, or like Africans today, looked like an Ethiopian, someone from Rwanda or whatever. Somalia, dark race people, but not the Negro. That's why so many Israelites were always mistaken throughout the Bible as Egyptians, because they were the same color. They looked alike in the color. They could easily be mistaken for one nation. You put a German and a, a, a Polish person in the same room, they're both white. Some people might look at both of them and go, well, oh, we're both Polish, oh, okay. Or we're both German. Yeah, I can see that. You could be mistaken one for the other. Just like an Israelite could be mistaken for an Egyptian when the Egyptians, being Hamites, were dark race people or Africans. And the Israelites were also dark race people or those that we know, as the Zondervan Dictionary says, um, uh, uh, excuse me, as the Zondervan <laughs> Dictionary said not the Negroes. I lost my train of thought there for a second. I saw someone walk by. That's cool. Let's continue. Uh, we're going to deal with Japheth in a little bit. Let's go to Amos, the third chapter. Amos, the third chapter. Amos 3. I lost my train of thought. It's easy to do. Amos 3. When you're dealing with definitions and everything else, I like to just dig into the scripture and move. Amos 3, let's look at the message of salvation and how the message of salvation comes. Amos 3 and verse 1, brother. 3 and 1, go ahead. Hear this word, what the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Skip down to 7 and continue, brother. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servants, the prophets. So God brought the, the, the message of salvation to mankind, and he gave it to Israel. He gave all his oracles to Israel. Let's continue. Let's go to Isaiah, the 8th chapter. 
Isaiah, the eighth chapter. Isaiah 8. And brother, we're going to pick it up and read one verse, verse 16. Isaiah 8 and verse 16. Go ahead. Bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Bind up the testimony and seal the law amongst my disciples. Who are the disciples of our Messiah? Israel. It's the only nation the Lord has ever known. The Lord never went to any other nation. All God ever did was make all his commandments, laws, statutes, and judgments known to one nation and one nation only, the nation of Israel. Let's continue. Let's go to John, the fourth chapter. Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. John 4. John 4. And brother, let's pick it up at verse 20. John 4 and verse 20. Go ahead. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Uh-huh. <coughs> Pardon me. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So now the Lord sees this woman, a Samaritan woman at the well, and he's having a conversation with her at the well. And it turns towards salvation. And he says, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither worship in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Go ahead. Ye worship, ye know not what we know what we worship for. Salvation is of the Jews. And he says, you worship, you know not what. But we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. To those that don't have any understanding in the mystery that Paul talks about that the nation of Israel didn't realize. It makes it sound like the salvation of God is only for Israel. But that's not what God is doing at this time. What he's doing is he's setting Israel back up on their job to teach all nations, and we'll make that clear as we continue. The message of salvation, sisters and brothers, must come through Israel. It has to come through Israel. Because God didn't give it to anybody else. Now, I'm not saying you have to sit down in front of a physical Israelite to learn the message of salvation. That's not what I'm saying. This book, this entire Bible, was written for Israel and by Israel. And you can get salvation out of just sitting down and reading this book and conducting yourself accordingly. But there's a way to prove who Israel is, sisters and brothers. And we have proven who Israel is. And we have sat in front of Israel. And we have been taught the commandments of God. And once you understand who Israel is, why wouldn't you want to sit underneath them and learn the commandments of God when you can plainly read in the Old and New Testaments all over the book God's got a protocol and a way of delivering his message of salvation to mankind. And the only way he does that is through the nation of Israel. Let's continue. Let's go to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Matthew, the 10th chapter. This is Jesus when he's in the flesh. He's already scattered 10 tribes because of disobedience. And he's dealing with with the tribe of Judah, who he's reserved for his servant David's sake. The oath that he made to David. For another time. Matthew 10, and let's pick it up at verse 5, brother. 10 and 5. What does Jesus tell his disciples? Go ahead. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans into ye not. Uh-huh. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. God doesn't do things twice. God does it once. If you're not on your job, he'll find someone else to take your spot. Moses was on the way to save the nation of Israel and pull them out of Egypt, and he forgot to circumcise his kids, his sons. His wife had to do it. She cast a flesh at his feet and said, You're a bloody husband unto me, because God was going to kill Moses for not circumcising his children. God's not a respecter of persons, sisters and brothers. But he's got a set way of doing things. And that set way of doing things, it's going to be done regardless of anything. God is going to do it the way he set it up to do it. And his protocol was from the Father to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, to the nation of Israel, to teach all nations. 
Are you done with that, brother? I'm at verse 7. Go ahead. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so now as you're going, start preaching the, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Skip to 11 and continue, brother. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and abide there till ye go thence. And whatever city you go into and you're teaching, inquire who wants to really know the truth. And that's where you're going to stay. Skip to 22 and continue. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth till the end shall be saved. And you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake, because then you're going to be preaching, and a lot of people aren't going to want to even hear it. He went as far as to say some of your enemies will be those of your own household. Go ahead and continue, brother. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man to come. And that is true even today, sisters and brothers, because Israel's been scattered throughout all nations and will not be gathered until Jesus returns. But he told the 12 disciples to go to the nation of Israel first because they're supposed to be that kingdom of priests and that holy nation. That's why the Lord chose them and set them up that way. And Jesus in the flesh was going to make sure that he got Israel back into the protocol doing what he wanted them to do so mankind can get this message of salvation. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Right before Jesus ascends into heaven, and we're going to read when he does in a little bit, this is what he told his 12 disciples after he went, suffered, and died for the sins of the world. He sent them out to go to nobody but Israel. Then right before he sent it into heaven, he walked with them for 40 days, opening their understanding to all things pertaining to the kingdom of God and righteousness. And then he told them this right before he ascends into heaven. Matthew 28, 19, brother, go ahead. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I want you to teach all nations and baptize them, and that name's Jesus. But I want you to teach all nations and baptize them. And what are you going to teach them? Go ahead, brother. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And you're going to teach all nations all things that I commanded you. So they can become a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Go to Mark, the 16th chapter. Gospel of Mark, just the next book. 16 chapters. Mark 16. We're going to get a second witness on this. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Mark 16 and verse 15, brother. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's the gospel? Everything I've commanded you. What's every creature? Teach all nations. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's what Matthew said. He that believeth and is baptized and saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned, because he doesn't get baptized in the name of Jesus, and he doesn't take hold of that covenant. Let's go into Acts, the first chapter. Now we have Jesus commanding his disciples, and now they're ready to ascend. He's ready to ascend back to our Heavenly Father. So this is what he commanded them as he's standing here in Acts, the first chapter. Well, the book doesn't say that, but I can only assume it's sometime around the time he's standing here in Acts, the first chapter. I'll leave it at that. Acts 1. Acts 1. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 3. 1 and 3. Go ahead. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Forty days he walked with the disciples, opening all their understanding to the kingdom of God. Go ahead, brother. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. So he told them to hang around Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. And they were going to hang around Jerusalem anyway. We're going to show you that because the Feast of Pentecost was coming up. Go ahead, brother. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and not many days hence. Uh-huh. And when they therefore 
were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Uh -huh. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Yes, sir. But ye shall receive power. After, after the, that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, ye shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh -huh. And when they had spoken these things, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Yes, sir. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So these are the disciples, and they're looking up there into heaven, they're going, whoa, whoa, check it out, man, he's going, wow, look at this. We'd all be tripping too, standing there with our mouths open. Close your mouth, dummy, you're catching flies, right? Go ahead, brother. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Uh-huh. The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, so shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go. Why are you standing here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, the way he's going now, he's coming back, so don't trip. You got work to do. Skip to 15 and continue, brother. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, Pardon. The number of the names together were about a hundred and twenty. Uh huh. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been filled, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judah, Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. So he's saying, men and brethren, the scripture must needs be fulfilled. This is Peter with the disciples that are about a hundred and twenty at this time. The disciples are all Israelites. Go ahead, brother. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Yes, sir. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Pardon me, I apologize. Go ahead, brother, you're good. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Talking about Judas killing himself for the guilt of, of, of betraying our Messiah. Go ahead. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch that as the field is called in their proper tongue, at Kaldama, uh -huh. that is to say, the field of blood. Yes, sir. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and let his bishop brick. Now, we're not going to go there. We're not going to read it. You can go there, and you can find that on your own. We don't have a lot of time today. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, of these men, which I have commanded, which I have accompanied with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out and among us, uh -huh. beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with all of us his resurrection? Yes, sir. Uh, and they appointed two, Joseph called Bersabbas, whose surname to Justus and Matthias. Uh -huh. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether these two thou hast chosen, Go ahead, that bro. he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he yes, might sir. go yes, his sir. place. And they gave forth their lots and fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So this is all Israelites. This is all the disciples of Jesus right here. Go right into Acts, the second chapter, and pick it up at verse 1, brother. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. We're coming back here in a minute, um, in a little bit. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Deuteronomy, 16th chapter. First, let's go see why they were gathered together for the Feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem. All Israelites, all disciples of Jesus, yes, he told them to tarry for a gift from the Father, but they knew they had to be there. Deuteronomy 16, brother, in one verse, verse 16. Go ahead. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. It's commanded three times in a year that they had appear before Jesus in a place he should choose, which was Jerusalem. Go ahead. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Feast of Unleavened Bread. In the Feast of Weeks. Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. In the Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles or in gathering. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. So they had to be there in Jerusalem. They were there for the feast. Let's go to Genesis the 10th chapter. So now we see right now, it's all Israel. All Israelites over there keeping the feast so far. They're in Jerusalem. We've we read about nothing but disciples. Disciples, a hundred and some odd disciples, plus the 11. Then they had to vote and get the one for Judas. As it was written in the law and in the Psalms that they had to replace that brother for killing himself. Because there had to be 12. We had 12 gates. 
You've got 12 foundations. You've got a name of each tribe on each one of those 12 gates and a name of each disciple on those foundations of his 12 disciples. They had to replace that brother. But now we need to find out what the Gentile is. Let's go to Genesis, the 10th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, brother. Genesis 10 and 1. Go ahead. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh-huh. And unto them were sons born after the flood. So we've already dealt with Shem and Ham. We're going to deal with Japheth. Go ahead, brother. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, what? and Tyrus. Uh-huh. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarmah, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. Yes, sir. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. Let's go and look at Smith's Bible Dictionary. You're going to get a real brief definition of what a Gentile is. Japheth, in Smith's Bible Dictionary, brother, go ahead. Japheth, one of the three sons of Noah, the descendants of Japheth, uh, occupied the isles of the Gentiles. So the, a descendant of Noah, one of his three sons, Japheth, occupied the isles of the Gentiles. We've just read that. Go ahead, brother. That is, the coastlands of the Mediterranean Sea uh -huh. in Europe and Asia Minor, whence they spread northward over the whole continent of Europe and considerable portions of Asia. So they spread... Now, the coastlands of the Mediterranean Sea in Europe and Asia Minor, once they spread northward over the whole continent of Europe and a considerable portion of Asia. So Gentiles are what we know as white people. Some are Caucasian. Some are other than Caucasian. That's why when you fill out the form and they want to know your ethnicity, you could put down Caucasian or you could put down other uh, what is it, Mexican, uh, Caucasian, other, or yeah, I, I forget Mexican. how it goes. But they include everybody, the Mexicans, the Asians, the Spaniards. They include everyone into that. Because you're one of the three sons. You're either from Shem, you're an, Ish 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 you're an Ishmaelite, you're an Arab, or you're an Israelite. You're a Negro. Or you're from the sons of Ham, you're one of the African nations dark race people, or you're a Gentile, you're a lighter shade. You're white and off-white, which includes the Orientals, which includes the Puerto Ricans, which includes the Native American Indians, all Gentiles, even though some of them aren't ruling today. Let's continue. Let's go back to Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. Acts 2. Acts 2. And, brother, we are going to pick it up at verse 5. Acts 2 and verse 5, brother. Go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So who heard them speak in their own language? Dw uh, devout Jews, or, or Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Israelites that had been scattered from every nation under heaven that they were scattered. They're all these Israelites that were devout men because they were up there keeping the feast. Go ahead, brother. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Uh-huh. And how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Yes, sir. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, in Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues. Not Romans, not Romans, strangers of Rome. Israelites that were scattered into Rome that were now keeping a feast. Paul was, out of the, was a Benjamite out of the tribe of Benjamin, was an Israelite out of the tribe of Benjamin, but he was a Roman citizen also. He was a stranger in Rome, or could have been considered one. Skip to 22 and continue. So far, it's all Israelites. Skip to 22 and continue, brother. You men of Israel. Hear you men of Israel. And strangers? You men of Israel and the Gentiles? What does he say, brother? Verse 22? You men of Israel, hear these words. 
Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wondrous and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Ye men of Israel, skip the 37 and continue, brother. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. For the promise is in you, is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. At this particular time, who are the promises to? Israel and Israel only. Gentiles weren't even allowed to learn about God at this particular time. Acts is in chronological order, sisters and brothers. It's all Israel keeping the feast. The only Gentiles there are Roman soldiers trying to keep order during the feast period. Go ahead, brother. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Yes, sir. Skip down. To, uh, or go ahead. One more verse. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Added unto the church, the true church of God, about 3,000 souls. Skip the 47 and continue, brother. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Go right into Acts 3 and pick it up at verse 12, brother, 3 and 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Teaching nobody but Israel. Still no Gentiles in the picture. Go ahead, brother. Or why look ye so earnestly on us? For by our own power or holiness... We had made this man to walk. Uh -huh. uh, let's go to Acts the 6th chapter. Acts the 6th chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. I had to cut 4 and 5 out, but it's just more of the same. Dealing with Israel. Had to cut it out for time. Acts 6 and verse 1. Brother, go ahead. And in those days when the numbers of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring among of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Now the Grecians were Israelites that spoke Greek. The other ones that spoke Hebrew were called Hellenists. Go ahead, brother. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Uh -huh. When the twelve were called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report and full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to ministry of the word. Uh huh. And saying... And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas. Uh -huh. And Nicholas was a proselyte of Antioch. Go ahead, brother. Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Yes, sir. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. Still nothing but Israel. In fact, some of the Gentiles are complaining that the women are being uh, neglected in the marketplace. So they had to put together some people to serve tables and some people to deal with just the word of God. All Israel. Go to Acts 7 and go right into verse 1, brother 7 and 1. Go ahead. Then said the high priest, are these things so? Uh -huh. And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Quran. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. Still nothing but Israel. Go into Acts the 8th chapter, brother, and pick it up at verse 1. Remember, Acts is in chronological order, sisters and brothers. Acts 8 and verse 1. Go ahead. And Saul was consenting unto his death. This is Paul before he was converted. Go ahead. And at that time there was such a great prosecution against the church which was at Jerusalem uh -huh. and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles yes sir and devout men uh, carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him go ahead as for Saul he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison uh-huh he made havoc of the church he made havoc of the church sisters and brothers Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Because Paul was over here making havoc of the church, those that believed in Jesus and were keeping the commandments of God. He was still doing the animal sacrifices, and anyone that believed in Jesus, he was suffering them, putting them to death, putting them into jail. He held the coats of the people that stoned Stephen. 
Now, let's go look at Paul, how he joins the church. Let's go into Acts, the ninth chapter. Still no Gentiles in the church, sisters and brothers. Acts 9 and verse 1, brother. 9 and 1, go ahead. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and uh -huh. tired of him. Letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of, of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Yes, sir. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. So he's going to do some more persecution, and he thinks he's doing God justice, and all of a sudden Jesus is going to introduce himself to him. Go ahead, brother. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Uh-huh. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. Go ahead. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thee must yes, do. Yes, sir. And the men journeyed, I'm sorry. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Uh -huh. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. Uh -huh. And he was three days without the sight neither did he eat or drink. So he's blinded for three days. He's not eating or drinking. He throws himself into fasting. Skip to verse 14 and continue, brother. And there he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Uh-huh. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is chosen, he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So the Lord sends a gentleman named Ananias unto Paul, to, to give him his sight, get him his sight back, and to baptize him, and to get him ready for what the Lord was setting him up for, to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And Ananias, the Lord says, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. The first thing that the Lord told him was, The first thing I want you to do is go to Israel, and I want you to begin in Jerusalem. And then he tells him that he's going to make him the apostle to the Gentiles, and Paul tells you all this later on in Acts when he's dealing with King Agrippa and Festus. But that's for another time. Go ahead and continue, brother. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. First thing Paul did, when he got his sight back, and, he, and Ananias told him, the Lord sent me to you to get you well, and of course he's telling him what he was going to do and why he was sending him. Jesus already made that clear to Paul. First thing Paul does is go, and he gets baptized in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, brother. And when he had received meat, and was strengthened, then Saul... Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus, uh -huh. and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. First thing he started doing was preaching the gospel of Christ Jesus. Go ahead, brother. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is it not he that destroyed them which is called on his name in Jerusalem, uh -huh. and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? They knew all about Paul. They knew how wicked Paul was to them. Isn't this that dude that's persecuting the church? Go ahead, brother. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that he, that this is very Christ. And he did exactly what we do today. He's preaching the scriptures, proving that Jesus was the Christ. Now, let's go look at the first Gentile that comes into the church. Remember, Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. Let's go to Acts, the 10th chapter. And Jesus told Peter, on the rock that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, will I build my church. And I've given you these keys to this kingdom, Peter. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Kind of made Peter the charge. That's why the Catholics like to twist scriptures and lie on Peter, saying, oh, he's the first pope. No, he's one of the last disciples you crucified, but he wasn't the first anything in your religion. Acts 10, and we're just going to take our time here. That's why I apologized early on saying we might be a little bit today. Acts 10, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1, brother. 10 and 1, go ahead. 
There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band. So he was a centurion of the band called the Italian Band. He's a Caucasian. He's Italian. Keep this in mind. Go ahead, brother. A devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, uh -huh. which gave much of the alms to the people and prayed to God always. And he was a religious man as far as the, the religion of Israel, the doctrine of the gospel of Christ Jesus, everything that he can learn to the best of his ability on what he can glean on what was going around, he was trying to emulate because he knew that this God was the true and living God. And all the other gods of the Gentiles, all these false idols and graven images, he knew they weren't real. Go ahead, brother. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Uh -huh. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. He said, Thou the Lord has been hearing your prayers and your alms, your alms. And so he sent me to you. God has sent me unto you, Cornelius. Go ahead. And now send men to Joppa. And call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh -huh. He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And he says, I want you to send for Simon Peter. And he tells him where he's lodging and everything. He's saying, and he probably told him he's an Israelite. He's going to tell you what you need to do. Go ahead, brother. And when the angels which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, a devout soldier and a devout soldier of them, that waited on him continually. So he took three of his servants that waited on him continually. Go ahead. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And he sent them to get Peter. Go ahead, brother. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So about the time they were coming, Peter was hungry, and he goes on a housetop to pray, up on a rooftop. And this was common in the days in Jerusalem. Go ahead. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten. But while they made it ready... He fell into a trance. So now he became hungry, but while they were making dinner and everything ready, the Lord put Peter in a trance so he could speak to him and give him a message. Go ahead. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down unto the earth, uh -huh. wherein were all manners of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. All these unclean animals on this, on this sheet knit at the four corners that the Lord had come down from heaven. Go ahead, brother. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And a voice told him, Arise and kill and eat. I know you're hungry, but now Peter kept the dietary law. Go ahead, brother. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Uh-huh. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, call that not thou common. Uh-huh. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again. And this happened day. three times, and each time, when Peter said, I've never eaten anything common or unclean, God told him, don't ever call anything that I have cleansed common or unclean. I've cleansed it. It's clean. Go ahead and continue, brother. Now, while Peter doubted him in himself. Now, Peter doubted in himself. Go ahead. What this vision which he had seen should mean. What the vision should mean because he knew he's not supposed to eat unclean animals. It's the law. He knows that. He woke up. He knows he's not putting a pork chop on his plate. He's not having a lobster tail. He's taking the shrimp out of the net and getting rid of them, just keeping anything that's got fins and scales, according to the dietary law. So now he's thinking on this, trying to figure out what the Lord's trying to tell him. And this thing happened three times, and he's sitting there and he's scratching his head. Go ahead, brother. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Uh huh. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. While Peter thought on his vision, the Spirit told him, Three men are looking for you. So now it's starting to make uh, some sense. Three times this happened, three men. Okay, go ahead. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. And I want you to go with them, and I don't want you to doubt anything. Go ahead, brother. Then Peter went down to the, to the men, which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause, therefore, ye are come? And Peter came down to Cornelius and said, I'm the guy that you're seeking. Why did you send for me? Go ahead. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear the words of thee. Uh-huh. Then called he them in, 
and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So Peter let him spend a night, and the next day he got some brothers, and he's going with them to find out why the Spirit is sending them unto the Gentiles. Go ahead. And on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, the and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. He's got his, he's got his kids, he's all his relatives and close friends that are with him, and are waiting on Peter. Go ahead. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. And Cornelius knew this was a man of God, because the angel sent for him. So as soon as Peter shows up, he starts bowing down to Peter. And look what Peter says. Go ahead. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Uh huh. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. So Peter sees this whole crowd there, and now he's probably tripping. Go ahead, brother. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come unto uh, one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So that knit with the unclean beast on it that came down three times, and then there were three men there. God was trying to tell Peter, I want you to go unto the Gentiles. They're not common and unclean anymore. I am going to bring them into the fold. Go ahead, brother. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I ask, therefore, what intent ye have sent me so for? So he's saying, what did you send for me for? Why? Go ahead. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, Thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Uh -huh. Send men to Joppa. And call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner, who is by the seaside. Uh huh. Who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent unto thee, and thou hast done well, that thou art come. Now, therefore, we are here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. So the angel sent me for you, who said, When you come, you shall speak unto us. And now, therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded of you. Just like Jesus told his disciples, go teach all nations everything I've commanded you. Those that are baptized will be saved. Those that aren't will be damned. So God told them to do that. And now God is sending Peter to start the process. Go ahead, brother. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation that he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. What's man's whole duty? Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Fear God and keep his commandments. It's the whole duty of man. Go ahead, brother. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Go ahead. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Uh -huh. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Uh -huh. And we are witness of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. And he said, we're witnesses. Is he breaking down Jesus being the Messiah? And he's saying, we're witnesses of all this. We watched him get crucified. We walked with him for so long. He's breaking it down. He's breaking down the gospel to these Gentiles. Go ahead, brother. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. Uh-huh. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him when he rose from the dead. Yes, sir. So he's telling them about everything that we read about earlier, how Jesus walked with them for 40 days, opening their understanding to all things pertaining to the kingdom of God, commanding them to go preach to all nations and everything. He's breaking down the gospel. He's telling them what they need to be saved. Go ahead, brother. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of uh -huh. the and the dead. Yes, sir. To give him all prophets, to him give all prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Go ahead. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them all which heard the word. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on everybody that was there that heard Peter speaking. All these Gentiles. Go ahead, brother. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, upon these Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Who are the Gentiles? 
Cornelius was a Caucasian of the Italian band. It's got all his family and close friends are there. All Gentiles or Caucasian people, probably all Italians. There might have been an Israelite mixed in the group that he was close with because he was trying to glean things from Israel. But it was all predominantly the first Gentiles joining the true church of God. Go ahead, brother. And they at the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was poured out also the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, and then answer Peter. The Gentiles speaking with tongues and magnifying God. So the Gentiles start preaching and, 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 and praising God, and these Israelites are hearing it in their own language. No one, these Italians, don't speak the language they were speaking. Go ahead, brother. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Should any man forbid that these Gentiles join the covenant of the true church, having received the Holy Ghost just like we did? And they haven't even been baptized and they got the Holy Ghost. Israel got baptized and never received the Holy Ghost after the laying on of hands. These Gentiles heard it and the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured on them. The Lord was trying to show Peter that it was open for all nations. Go ahead, brother. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord and prayed to them to tarry and prayed him to tarry certain days. Go right into the 11th chapter and pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard what the word heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Again, Gentiles are nothing more than Caucasian people. This includes the Greeks later on, sisters and brothers, the Romans, everyone Paul went to, the Thessalonians, the Colossians, all of them. Go ahead, brother. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, uh -huh. saying, Thou went to send to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. So now when he came back to Jerusalem, all the other um, elders, Israelites, that were of the true church said, Whoa, what are you doing, man? You know you're not supposed to go to another nation. We heard you went to some Gentiles. Go ahead and continue, brother. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying... But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. He said, I know they're going to jump me, man. i got to have my ducks in a line here. i got to be able to explain why I did this. Well, first of all, I was praying and meditating, and then an angel come on to me and told me to go. And so he's recounting everything to them. And they're making a lot of things plain here, but we don't need to go there for the sake of this lesson. Let's skip to 12 and continue, brother. And the Spirit bade me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And this Spirit, the Holy Ghost, told me to go with them. Moreover, I took six brothers with me as witnesses. Go ahead. Who shall... Oh, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh -huh. Who shall tell thee these words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Who shall tell thee... Words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And all of a sudden, the Gentiles are filled with the Spirit. And, and we know from other lessons and other readings that when you're filled with the Spirit, the main byproduct of being filled with the Spirit is you prophesy. And that's what the Gentiles were doing, speaking in tongues and prophesying and everything. Tell us where you're at. Continue, brother. 15. Yes, sir. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Uh-huh. Then I remembered the words of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. For as much then as God gave them the, the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? What could I withstand God? Told, God told me to go, I went. I was obedient. Go ahead. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God. And now they understood the mystery that Paul talks about in Romans. That it wasn't just for Israel, that it was for all nations. Go ahead, brother. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phinehas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Now even though they know now that the Gentiles are open to the covenant, they still went and started preaching to nobody but Israel. Because God had a plan. Go ahead, brother. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Still nothing but Israel they're preaching to. Go ahead, brother. Then the 
tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Go ahead. Who, when he came, and had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all, with, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Yes, sir. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith. And of much people he was added unto the Lord. He was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith. In other words, he was a good man in God's eyes. He was walking according to the faith. And he was doing it righteously. And he was pleasing in God's sight. Go ahead. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Uh -huh. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. All they're doing is teaching Israel. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And it was not a term of endearment. It was a slang, and it was meant to poke fun at. Let's go to Acts, the 13th chapter. Acts, the 13th chapter. Let's see when Paul turns and starts bringing Gentiles in in earnest. Because it wasn't given to Peter. Remember, when Jesus met Paul on the way to Damascus, he said he was going to be the disciple or the apostle to the Gentiles. Acts 13 and we're going to pick it up at verse 13, brother. 13 and 13. Go ahead. Now when Paul and his company, loose from Paphos, they came from, from per, Perga and Pamphylia, and John departed from thence unto Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sorry. John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. But when they departed from Perga, they came unto Antioch and Sid Pisidia, and came unto the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. They knew... Gentiles weren't allowed in the synagogue at the time, but they had, it hadn't been set up for them to go to the Gentiles yet. Again, you can go read about Paul's dialogue, Acts 20-something, when he's dealing with uh, Agrippa and Festus, and he's saying that he was sent first to Israel and then to the Gentiles. Go ahead, brother. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. So now after the reading of the law and the prophets and everything, they open up the floor for anybody with understanding. Go ahead. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. All Israel, men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Skip the 42, brother, and let's continue. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So now when the Jews are gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles that were out there that were trying to learn about the true and living God, they wanted this to be taught to them the next Sabbath. Go ahead, brother. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And they spoke to Paul and Barnabas, and they persuaded them to come back next week and teach. Go ahead. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. And the next Sabbath day came the whole city almost to hear the word of God. Go ahead, brother. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Excuse me. And spake against those things which they were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. And when Israel saw the multitudes, they started, they, they, they were filled with envy and false pride, and they wanted to break it up. Go ahead. But then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Because that's what was commanded of him, was to go to Israel first. Go ahead. But, seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy unto uh, everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. But, seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, shut your own eyes and own ears, like uh, Isaiah said, we're going to turn to the Gentiles. And that's exactly what Jesus told Paul to do. I want you to first go to Israel, and then you're going to become the apostle or the disciple to the Gentiles. Go ahead and continue, brother. 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Uh -huh. But when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of God, as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed, sisters and brothers. In other words, they were baptized in the name of Jesus, and they took hold of this covenant. These are Gentiles that are going to come up in the first resurrection, if they've endured until the end. Go ahead, brother. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Now, let's go see 
Paul explaining what we just read to the Romans. Let's go to Romans, the 11th chapter. Romans to the 11th chapter. Paul's the disciple to the Gentiles, or apostle to the Gentiles, because the Gentiles are now in rule. All three sons of Noah have had a time to rule this earth. And they all get, from what best I can tell, about 2,000 years. The end of the reign of the Gentiles is almost upon us, which is the return of our Messiah. It's almost been 2,000 years, sisters and brothers, and you can tell that by the signs of the times. No man knows for sure, but God still gave us signs so that we're prepared for what's going to happen before this world ends. And if we don't make it to the wilderness and we're caught up in tribulation, we have to know the signs that are taking us into tribulation so we can do our best to make it those three and a half years if the Lord deems us to be one of those that's trying to convert people during the Great Tribulation. Because if, if we're one of those that's trying to convert others, we're going to be running for our life, sisters and brothers. Because there is no rapture for another time. Romans 11, let's look at what Paul's explaining, what we just read in Acts. 11 and 16, brother, go ahead. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the, the root be holy, so are the branches. So if Jesus is holy, everything that is part of his true church is holy, and the branches right here are the nation of Israel. Go ahead, brother. And if so the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and that with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Now some of the branches will be broken off, those that deem themselves unworthy, Paul said, so that thou, being a wild olive tree, can be grafted in among them and be a partaker of that root. Go ahead, brother. Boast not against the branch. Don't boast against Israel. Go ahead. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the tree. Because if you boast, you don't have no part in righteousness, but Jesus is going to judge you and throw you in the fire. Go ahead, brother. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted. Thou wilt say then, Israel, what happened to Israel happened to them that me, as a stranger, as a Gentile, might be grafted in. Go ahead, brother. Excuse me. Go ahead. Verse well, 20. because of the unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, and be not high-minded, but fear. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand here by faith or belief. Don't be high-minded, but you better fear. Fear God and keep his commandments. Seek your own salvation with fear and trembling. Go ahead, brother. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Because if God didn't spare Israel, what do you think he's going to do to the Gentile who's not his chosen people? It's not even time for the nations to come into it yet. It's time for individuals to come into it right now. But if God didn't spare his chosen people, the only nation that he ever knew, what do you think he's going to do to you, Gentile, that comes into this and starts walking contrary, spitting in, in the eyes of grace? Go ahead, brother. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, of them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. Those that endure until the end shall be saved. Let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter. And we're almost there, sisters and brothers. It wasn't quite as long as I feared it might be. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Paul turning to teach the Gentiles, then he explained how he came to teach the Gentiles, how the Lord Jesus had him do it to the Romans. Now he's going to explain the same thing to the Ephesians. That's why they say Paul's writings sometimes are hard to be understood and that you can rest or twist them to your own destruction if you don't have understanding. But we're piecing this together for the sake of those that don't have understanding, that don't know the gospel of Christ Jesus, that might see this message that we did today, will come to understand that this is a God of all nations and there's only one way to him. So he's going to explain this to the Ephesians. Ephesians 2 and verse 11, brother, go ahead. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So in times past, you Gentiles that have come into the covenant were called Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by those that were called the circumcision. So the Gentiles used to be called the uncircumcised. 
And Israel is what called them that. Go ahead, brother. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And at that time, under the old covenant, you were without God and without hope in the world. Because it was God going to Israel to set them up to come and bring you Gentiles in. Go ahead, brother. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. See, those that were sometimes afar off in Christ Jesus, you're now made close to the covenant by his blood. By his shed blood. Not the blood of animals. Those blood of the animal sacrifices under the old covenant could never do anything. They were just a, a placard to put in place until Christ Jesus came and became that sacrifice for sin. Go ahead, brother. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken us down in the middle part, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition. Because the sacrifice of our Messiah has made us both one, and has broken down that middle wall of partition between us. Go ahead, brother. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain one new man. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, enmity between man and God, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. He didn't change the law of commandments. There's still an a animal sacrifice for sin, sisters and brothers. When you sin through ignorance, you have to have a, a perfect sacrifice. It's got to be a perfect lamb without spot, without blemish. That's the law. The ordinances of the law, under the old covenant, it was a lamb out of your flock. Once Christ Jesus came and he suffered and died for the sins of the world, the old covenant ended, the temple veil ripped in half, where the blood had, the priest had to take the blood and, for sin sacrifice, and he had to sprinkle it on a temple veil seven times for sin, and anoint the horns of the altar, when that temple veil ripped in half or rent in half, it signified the end of the old covenant. Now Jesus is your Passover sacrifice, that perfect lamb without spot and without blemish. So those commandments, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So he's taking the stranger or in this case, as he's saying, to, to make it clear under these times today, the Gentile and the Israelite, those two are going to become one. He's taking himself and making twain one new man, so making peace. He's taking one flock and another flock and bringing them together as one true church, according to his commandments, statutes, judgments and laws that he gave to the nation of Israel. Go ahead, brother. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, uh -huh. and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them which were not. Yes, For sir. Through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And through Jesus we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. These 66 books sitting in front of us. The word is spirit, and it is life. Go ahead, brother. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, uh -huh. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So now you're no more foreigners, but you're fellow citizens with the saints. In other words, what was given to Israel? One law for all. Let's continue. Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, and we have one other place after this. Jeremiah 16... Jeremiah 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19, brother. Jeremiah 16 and verse 19. Whenever you get there, brother, go ahead. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Now, individuals are doing this now. We have done this now. But at the appointed time... The entire Gentile nations, as nations, are going to come unto God like this. Go ahead, brother. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Uh-huh. Therefore, behold, I will... 
this once cause them to know, I will cause them to know mine hand and thy might, and they shall know that mine name is the Lord. So at the appointed time, the Gentiles are even going to come unto the Lord and say, there is no profit in what our fathers have taught us. They were all lies. They were all traditions of men. Those gods weren't even real. Last place, John the 10th chapter. John 10. John 10. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Jesus told us over and over in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, in Isaiah the 56th chapter, all over the book, Jesus said, that he was going to gather all nations that were righteous unto him. Sisters and brothers, today we have showed you the true church last week, and we showed you a continuation of the true church this week that included the Gentiles. Or basically, you could say all strangers of any nation. We're going to end it here. John, the 10th chapter, and verse 14. Brother, go ahead. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Uh -huh. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are none of this fold. Them also I must bring, that they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Jesus even told you that he was that shepherd in, in, in the, uh, the book of the prophet Jeremiah. He's going to take both Israel and the strangers, and he's going to bring them together as one fold, and it's going to be one church, and there's going to be one shepherd, one spirit to the Father. And it all goes through the true church, sisters and brothers, through what God gave to the nation of Israel. So, sisters and brothers, the true church and the Gentiles, as always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word, and we hope you got something from these scriptures.